any insight on what the station will look like? The station will be themed to uh, Frontier Canada, Old Rush of 1890. Is there going to be any special effects in the tunnel? Nothing that I want to talk about today. Okay. <laughs> Um, and I guess to com is anything we don't know about Yukon Striker? Um, it's hard to know what you already know uh, or what you don't know. That's a tough question to, to answer. Is, is there anything that uh, maybe hasn't been announced yet for Yukon Striker in the POVs and stuff? Um, no, there's a few other things that we're going to add that we'll leave as a, as a surprise. Um, but yeah, that'll come later. They're not going to be substantial, they'll be minor. Yeah. <laughs> um, what happens in the tunnel when there is a downpour? Well, obviously the tunnel's open on both ends, so the rain will come in. So rain finds its way to the bottom here, we've got a pump pit at the other end, and the pump will drain the water out of the, out of the tunnel. Any insight on Frontier Canada and what we maybe can expect? Frontier Canada's been a, a phased build over the years, and that, that phased approach will continue even beyond the down strike. So um, it'll just be more of the same thing. So the, the theme of this ride and the surrounding area will continue to uh, be in that vein. It'll be a multi-year. What was Wonderland looking for when approaching BNM for Yukon Striker? What were their like requirements or asks that like must-haves? Well, we wanted to have the tunnel, obviously, and we wanted to integrate it with Vortex. We wanted to have a loop. And we wanted to have something that was thrilling, something that had never been done before. So four inversions and the height and the length. And it's a dive place to start for one We started in 2013, maybe it was 2012. It was quite some time. It was before Skyrider was removed. Okay, makes sense. <laughs> yeah. When did planning for Frontier Canada start? That planning started in 1980, before Wonderland opened. We've been, you know, uh, what Mike and Mind Buster was one of the first attractions for Frontier Canada. Um, Frontier Canada was, was planned to have other attractions, but uh, that didn't happen, and now we're back in, into the Frontier Canada plan, or continuation of Frontier Canada. Whitewater Canyon's part of it, Temple of Forest is part of it, Flying Canoes, Swarming Timbers, Flying uh, Lumberjack, Canyon Trader, all of those uh, attractions are part of that. So when did Cedar Fair decide to revisit the concept? Um, I guess it was with Soaring Timbers. Yeah, I think it was with Soaring Timbers. So 20, what was that, 2016? Or was it 2017? 2017. Yeah. And then the last one, can we expect the midway and entrance to be Canada's Wonderland's best yet? Or any further insight on the midway and entrance for Yukon Striker? Best is a... Is a Subjective term, and it's different for every person, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're, we're planning it to be appropriate, um, and to be fitting to, to what the ride is. The ride's impressive, so we want the, the area to match. It, uh, I don't think there'll be any surprises, but it'll be what people expect. Alrighty, so as many of you know, we released a 24 minute documentary style video or what some of you may call a poor attempt at a documentary style video. I am so sorry. We honestly, or I should say, I honestly wanted to try something new. Um, I really am new to YouTube. A lot of you do know that who know me well. So I'm new to YouTube. I wanted to try something unique and it didn't go across as planned. The interview audio was terrible um, because it seems like our mic for the MP3 wasn't plugged in fully. So the phone itself was picking up the audio, so it came across weird. Thank God we were recording on a camera, so we got the interview on a camera as well. So thank you to Anthony for actually doing what I asked him not to do, and it actually benefited in the end. So thank you, Anthony. Shout out to you. You were a lifesaver. Um, and uh, thank you to Jared uh, for the footage. You helped me. You came out with your cameras and helped me film for the day and your footage turned out amazing. So this was definitely a team effort. Wanted to give a huge thank you to them um, and Grace and uh, Peter um, for giving us the construction tour and the interview. So a couple of things that we learned, um, a lot of you said that you really wanted the voiceover. So we're going to redo the documentary style video, I guess, the hard hat tour, the proper amusement insiders way. 
So basically a few things that we learned on this quick construction tour, I shouldn't say quick, it was actually two hours long, um, is uh, we learned that it seems like Yukon Striker uh, was meant for Canada's Wonderland back in 2016. They started planning it back in 2012. Um, and then uh, Frontier Canada came into the planning phase back in 2016, 2017. So if you actually add up that storyline and you go back to our Cedar Point, still Canada's Wonderland's coaster, uh, <laughs> quotations, exclamation point, you'll learn that uh, it's definitely true. Canada's Wonderland was meant to get a dive coaster back in 2016. Something happened. Well, by something, we're a family park. We're not a family park. We're a part of a family chain of parks. Um, and Cedar Fair needed an emergency investment over at Cedar Point. So they needed a coaster. We're a family park. We gave it over to them in uh, good spirits. And now they have their dive coaster. And now we have our Yukon Striker. Everyone's happy. Win-win. We get Frontier Canada along with it. We also learned Frontier Canada is not over. This is only the beginning, apparently. There's a lot more to come. You're going to see similar designs moving forward after Yukon Striker. That is exciting. There are a few surprises not yet announced. They're not big surprises. They're tiny surprises. And we also learned that there may be some things not yet announced through the tunnel. There may be some theming slash, um, I guess, special effects in the tunnel that are not yet announced. And Peter did not give us any details on those, but he did have that little smirk as if something more is coming. Um, a few other things we learned um, is that I'm trying to think back to what we learned. Uh, we learned that the construction site is actually a lot larger than we thought. So when I originally um, saw that the coaster was heading over there, we've known for quite some time the coaster was going to head over towards Timberwolf Falls. I thought they were only going to remove a few trees to make way. Well, it turns out they removed all the trees. You all know that by now. It looks so weird over there now. Um, a couple other things we learned is um, the coaster is on schedule to obviously open on time. We also learned that the coaster does have an emergency flood relief system down in the tunnel. It actually has uh, the one hooked up to the park electricity, and then it has one hooked up to emergency park electricity in case there's a power outage. So that tunnel is definitely ready for any downpour of rain at any time. Um, the coaster will not operate if fireworks still take place in that area. That is all that was said to us. Take what you will from that. Um, and uh, we also learned that the trains are not going to be unique at all. So they are going to exact, probably be exact clone of Valraven trains. So nothing exciting or new there. Um, a bit of exciting um, facts we learned during this trip is that there is a large team that goes into designing the name for a coaster. In fact, Canada's Wonderland had an extremely large team help with the name of Yukon Striker, and there were lots of names they went over. They can't reveal what those names were or give any hints as to what they were, um, but uh, yeah, it was definitely a very large team, and they even used outside resources when coming up with the name. So that was really exciting um, to learn. I definitely want to let you guys also know that um, you need to go follow Grace Peacock on Twitter. She is the... Uh, communications the head of communications for canada's wonderland and she has some really awesome tweets that she does all the time and she releases these really informative blogs and it's all thanks to her that we got this awesome construction tour and who knows maybe we have something coming up in just a couple of weeks who knows maybe the completion of the lift hill so stay tuned for that um that's super exciting and i'm very thankful that the park invited us to this event hopefully you guys enjoyed this much shorter more informative and uh <laughs> <laughs> my voiceover added in as it seems a lot of people were missing that and I promise we are taking your feedback so anytime you have a comment or concern feel free to message me on Instagram privately if it's like a very serious concern or comment down below if you simply want something else it seems like for the documentary style videos you guys want that calmer music and for our other videos you're okay with the epic music anyways thanks for watching guys have a good one give this video a like subscribe if you haven't and share this video for others to enjoy have a good one, guys. Bye.